What's up everybody, I'm Jesse, or as you all may know me, Game Over Jesse, and today I have a very special guest with me, my friend and huge Zelda fan, Holly Wolf. Go ahead and introduce yourself for those watching that may not know who you are. Awesome. Alright, yeah, th first of all, thank you so much for having me. And uh, yeah, so my name is Holly Wolf. Um, I'm a big Zelda fan, I'm a cosplayer, I get booked at uh, lots of Comic Cons and events, and then I also model as well basically full-time so i get to travel a lot which can like kind of make it so i don't get to play as many games as i would like from time to time but yeah other than that i'm just really really excited for breath of the wild so. all right and have you been able to pre-order a copy of breath of the wild yeah i actually have a pre-order for both uh the switch and the wii u awesome uh, just in case i don't get the <laughs> switch in relative time so uh yeah i actually i've already played it on the wii u uh back at e3 last year i i stood in line for like four hours oh i, I had no idea you went to e3 last year That's yeah awesome. yeah i go to e3 every year now which is great so uh but yeah that was the first time i got to see the booth um firsthand and that was extremely excited so i've been excited ever since yeah. then they had the giant Link statue and the giant Guardian statue there. That was awesome. Yeah, I was actually in the E3 magazine uh, under the statue going like this. Oh, awesome. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> pretty funny. Yeah. All right. uh, so you do modeling and everything, but you also have your own YouTube channel that you kind of post your vlog videos and yeah. uh, you have one video that you're working on right now. Why don't you go ahead and let people know what that is so they can check it out whenever you upload it. Yeah, so um, I'm actually, I've been working on a cosplay of uh, Zelda ever since she was first introduced in the trailer um, when the Nintendo Switch presentation happened. So as soon as I saw her new design, I kind of put everything else on hold that I was doing and got to it right away. So I actually just finished it the other day. We shot amazing video content and uh, I'm going back to shoot photos again um, soon, but I'm also, I'm just putting out segments of videos and the first will be basically like, um, the month long process of making the cosplay. And then from there, I'll be doing other videos after. All right. And how long does a typical cosplay take you to create from beginning to end? It depends. Um, it depends on how crazy intricate it is. If it's a huge armor cosplay, it can take quite a while. Just the painting and drying and priming process alone can take a while. Um, I had help with the tunic, Zelda's tunic, since it's mostly fabric. I am I am not the best at sewing <laughs> clean lines, and her tunic is obviously very beautiful and detailed. So I got my wonderful friend Sarah from Sci-Fi Candy, who does a lot of like costly bikini stuff um, that I've modeled for her. I got her to help me with the tunic and the corset because I was like, it needs to look beautiful. And if I do it, it will not look beautiful. Um, so I created the Sheikah slate, which lights up and that's LED lighting. That took me a bit because it was my first prop that I've actually done with LED lighting. So I wanted to make sure it looked great. So I took my time on that. Um, but yeah, otherwise it depends really. I, I made a Cloud's Buster Sword from uh, the Advent Children. Um, no, not Advent Children, Kingdom Hearts version of yeah. Cloud. Stripe, and that sword took me quite some time just because it's so huge. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty um, massive. Yeah, it's I see it right now. It's sitting almost beside me. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so it depends on it depends on the cosplay really, All types right. of materials, how much you got to do. So yeah. <laughs> and how long have you actually been cosplaying? Is it something that's recently been an interest for you, or is it something that you've kind of always been doing? Um. Well, I started modeling first. So I, uh, I work with companies like Playboy and Maxim. Um, I'm like Playmate of the Year for Czech Republic. I've been on several covers, which is great. So, and a lot of people know me for that. But um, it was after I started modeling full time. And I, I it, it's funny actually, I was in <laughs> Vegas. I remember I was in Vegas and the show Heroes of Cosplay was on TV. I I'm used Canadian. to love that show when it was on. I got sad yeah. whenever the yeah. season stopped. Yeah, see I'm Canadian and we didn't just have it on TV here. So I'm in Vegas, it's like three in the morning. This is randomly on TV. I was like, 
what is this? Yeah. <laughs> Became obsessed. I was like, wait, 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 wait. People like do this full time. <laughs> it's amazing. So I basically just slowly made my way over. <laughs> and it was great because I kind of hid a lot of my love of like video games and anime. Yeah, your, and your entire kind of nerdy side. Yeah, just because I was in, I'm in this like realm, which you, like a lot of models, they don't, they don't talk about that stuff. They don't like that stuff. So if I talk about that stuff, people are like, what are you talking about? I, <laughs> I cried. Um, while when E3, when they released, um, the new Breath trailer the for the trailer. remake. Huh? Oh, I cry for that oh, too. Oh, yeah. the, the remake. When I, I remember I was shooting at this gorgeous mansion in LA and it was like the, the pre-stuff for E3 and they released the remake for Final Fantasy VII. Oh yeah. Yeah. And I was watching it on my eye, like my iPhone <laughs> and I started like tearing. And I was with another playmate and she's like, what's wrong, Holly, what's wrong? I was like, they just, they just released that they're, they're remaking Final Fantasy VII. And my friend was like, don't talk to me. <laughs> wow. I just didn't really like talk about that stuff <laughs> so for a while. You mentioned that like, there's moments like that where you kind of hide your nerdy side or whatever. Has there been a moment to where like you accidentally let your nerdy side or your nerdy side slip, and then someone you were with was like, "Oh my God, you like Zelda too, or you play Final Fantasy," and got excited with you? Yeah, I would say that happens quite often, especially now that I like I obviously talk about it all the time now. I've I've <laughs> let it become part of who I am more so, and it's it's like. I'm just, yeah, I just, that's what I do now, I guess, but, yeah. um, And your, uh, your YouTube channel, is, is that the only YouTube channel that you personally have? Yeah, I had an old one that I used to do more stuff to, but I'm getting rid of it and I had to make a new one, um, just because of weird YouTube stuff, <laughs> but, um, yeah, no, and I'm trying to make it more game-centered and focused and everything. Yeah. I don't know if you can hear the Discord happening in my headset. <laughs> I hope not. Yeah. But uh, yeah, um, yeah, no. But I, I like having conversations about video games. I think more than anything else, and I think people see that when when I start to really talk about it. Yeah. And uh, the people that are also into it, they're like, "Wow, like this is great. This is really nice." So. Yeah, I was asking specifically because uh, your YouTube channel. If anyone goes to it. Well, if anyone follows you on Twitter, you post a lot of your YouTube stuff through Twitter, and on your YouTube channel, it's, as I said earlier, a bunch of cosplay stuff, but your most viewed video, I believe, is your Breath of the Wild reaction video. Oh, so, yeah. uh, you said now that uh, you kind of let your nerdy side out, you find other people that or in the same business or whatever your friends that also have the nerdy side. So it's not really that hard for someone to like come across your profile and then see what a mm -hmm. huge nerd you are or whatever because of your uh, YouTube. Yeah, no, that's very true. I actually had someone earlier today, uh, one of my one of my girlfriends messaged me and she said, hey, are you going to go see the new The Sword Art Online movie? You're the only other person I know <laughs> in Toronto that would want to go see it. Can we go see it together? That's and I was awesome. like, yes, let's go. So that stuff happens. So yeah, definitely. Yeah. And uh, you have a boyfriend. I, I believe you told me he plays basketball. Yes. Does, does he have a nerdy side as well? Or is he? He does. He does. <laughs> um, and it's funny because he tries to hide it. But for example, I'm not I'm not a big Pokemon person. Yeah. Right. So when Pokemon Go came out, I was like happy about it. It was so much fun. And I would kind of like stumble on a name and I would catch him and be like, yo, that's so and so. And I was like, oh really? <laughs> so like it'll come out here and there and it's really it's really cute to see and stuff. Yeah. But... And he'll watch a lot of shows with me and everything. He's not he's not a Zelda person. Yeah. It's kind of unfortunate, but it's okay. See, it, it kind of reminds me of uh, my older brother because... <laughs> awesome mug. Yeah, but it, it kind of reminds me of my older brother because uh, he played basketball in college and everything, and 
Uh, whenever we were little, whenever I first started playing Ocarina of Time, we got it for Christmas with the Nintendo 64, and he would always be playing it with me. And this was when we were both in like elementary school, it was so long ago. So uh, whenever Ocarina of Time 3D came out for the Nintendo 3DS, I had bought it, and he was home from college uh, for the weekend. And I had left the 3DS in the bedroom, went and did something, and whenever I came back, I picked up the 3DS and seen that there was a second save file. <laughs> and he had made it all the way through the first and the second dungeon in just the few hours that he was playing. So it was really interesting to see that he still remembered how to like do everything and where to go after being awesome. like uh, basically... I think middle school, he started yeah. devoting all of his time to just working out and basketball, so. <laughs> yeah, well, workout life. <laughs> yeah, and it, it, was, it was really weird seeing people uh, that you wouldn't necessarily assume would be into all the nerdy stuff, whether it's video games or anime or whatever, and yeah. then seeing the, like, whenever they realize it's okay that their nerdy side comes out, suddenly they just go, like, full nerd. <laughs> Yeah, and I think it's good. I think it's it's become, it's very weird. Even within the last few years, it's become a lot more acceptable. Yeah, I think like we've seen the Star Wars movies are like the biggest yeah. movies of the years. And before, like you, if you mentioned, hey, let's go watch Star Wars, then a lot of people would just look at you like, oh, you're a huge nerd. Yeah, exactly. But now it's like the number one movies of the year so it's really yeah. cool to see and then uh the show we were talking about earlier heroes of cosplay there's king of nerds and then uh it's not in america anymore but one of my friends cody davis who runs well he doesn't run but he's the webmaster for zeldauniverse.net oh, okay and he was on the australian version of beauty and the geek oh okay, if you've cool. ever heard of that show yeah i have so uh, seeing shows like that to where it's basically made for nerd culture is really, really cool. Yeah, no, it's really, I like how it's become much more acceptable. And yeah, like you said, like Marvel and DC and, and Disney and Star Wars and stuff, <laughs> they're, they're just, they're killing it for the movies and everything. And video games too. Video games is like a multi-billion dollar industry. And, and I think everyone's starting to realize that it's, it's a big deal. Yeah. Whenever I tell people how many, like how many people tune in and watch like the League of Legends tournament every year, compared to like major sports events in the U.S., they're like, "You're lying." I'm like, "No, no, no, <laughs> I'm not lying." Yeah, it, it, it's crazy. Uh, I remember I was reading the Game Informer magazine that comes with your GameStop uh, Power Up Rewards thing. And the first time that I really started paying attention to the esports thing, I was reading the magazine and it said the winners of some tournament had won like six million dollars between all of them. And I'm like, that is an insane amount of money to go in and just win a few video game rounds, which is insane. Which I know like they practice all year long for that, but still it's crazy. Uh, but yeah, we uh, uh, talked about Breath of the Wild and Zelda a little bit. It's coming out in like a week. Uh, what are you most excited for it? I don't know. I'm just I'm I'm excited to like I'm excited to see the storyline. Like I want I want to know what happened. <laughs> yeah. Do you pay attention to the timeline or anything, or do you just yeah. go game by game? No, I I pay attention to the timeline. Um, a good amount, um, yeah. So to see where it falls, I know they said that it's it's going to be a it's after Ocarina. Yeah. So far, uh, Alanuma, which is the person that's in charge of the Zelda series now, uh, he hasn't revealed a lot because he wants people to come to their own conclusion and find out where it is while they play the game. But mm -hmm. he has revealed that it does take place after Ocarina of Time, and yeah. uh, someone sort made, of... yeah, and so. someone made a comparison to The Wind Waker, mm. and he said that while the game may uh, seem a bit familiar to The Wind Waker because it has the, some of the same races, the Deku Tree, and some of the other stuff, and it, they both yeah. have kind of a cartoony style, art style yeah. to it. But he said, although the game and certain visuals may look similar to The Wind Waker, that the story itself has nothing to do with The Wind Waker. Mm -hmm. So uh, where Ocarina of Time 
uh, and this goes into like the deep hardcore Zelda fans where Ocarina of Time has the three splits. One of them splits off, goes into the Wind Waker, one goes into Twilight Princess uh, yeah. with Majora's Mask, and the third one splits off into A Link to the Past and all of the uh, 2D Zelda games. So mm-hmm. this one has to fall either somewhere after Majora's Mask or somewhere after A Link to the Past. So it'll be really interesting to see where it goes and how it connects to those other games. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So uh, before they announced Breath of the Wild or showed it off at E3, what kind of ideals did you have for it? Like, what was your expectations? Did you think it was going to be something similar to Skyward Sword, which was their last home console Zelda game? Or were you thinking it was going to be more realistic like Twilight Princess? Ah, uh, I don't know. Um, I have to try to think of what I, what I thought <laughs> was going to happen. Um, I, kn- I know that Skyward Sword got a lot of, like, crap. Like Yeah, the motion like, controls know? and everything. Exactly. So people were a little upset about that game as a whole and everything. So um, I, I had a feeling that they were going to try to stay away from the negatives of Skyward Sword, even though I did like it. Um, and yeah. I loved the animation to it as well, but I I loved Twilight Princess. I just... So Majora's Mask is my favorite Zelda game in yeah. the franchise. I just... I like how dark it is. Yeah, movie, earlier... Even though it's, part two, it's very cute, just like Ocarina of Time, obviously it's not very realistic at all, but it just had such a sad dark undertone to it so i really loved that game it's it's still my favorite um and so twilight princess i also really liked um because of that reason um wind waker i actually didn't play for a long time until until the hd remake i didn't touch it i was so angry (laughs) because (laughs) it looked like a cartoon yeah okay (laughs) I was like, yeah. I don't like this. <laughs> See, I, I think it's perfect for the little kids. Like, my little brother just turned eight, and he's never really played video games before, but he's always watching cartoons. And with The Wind Waker, I thought it was the perfect Zelda game to kind of get him into it, because he always sees me uh, making Zelda videos and everything. Right. And uh, so, where it looks like a cartoon, basically he can play through it as if he's watching a cartoon. He just has problems with... Uh, the way that the text pops up and it doesn't have any voice acting, that's what right. gets him because he doesn't necessarily know where to go or what to do. But with Breath of the Wild, there is voice acting. Yeah. Is that something that you're excited about? Because I know like there's a lot of people that are like, oh, if they bring voice acting to the Zelda games, then it'll ruin the series for me. And then there's people that, you know, they, they just have what they like and what they don't like. But what about you with yeah. voice acting? What were your thoughts? Um, well, I like it especially the Japanese voice acting. I always tend to go towards Japanese voice acting. Yeah, Um, for all of the anime that you watch? Hmm? For all of the anime that you watch? Yeah. When I watch watch anime, I'll I'll always watch it in Japanese. And when I'm cosplaying and just kind of working away, I'll re-watch things in English just to have it on and just kind of whatever. Yeah. But um, I think it's great. I would say the only thing that I wouldn't want is for Link to have a voice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's because uh, I feel like it's he's just so iconic in the way that he is that it would it would be really weird if he if he was had a designated voice. Yeah, because even in the games where it's just the text that pops up on the screen, he still never really has anything to say. I, yeah silent yeah. everyone else has their little like grunts and noises and stuff and link's yeah. always been very silent besides his you know rolling and hitting things <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I actually have a friend who lives in the uk and uh a couple of years ago he made well he's a director and he made a zelda short film um because okay. between his actual movies that he makes uh for money he makes these little projects for fun and he made a Zelda short based off of Ocarina of Time. And it's really interesting because he has the actor that plays Link and the actor actress that plays Zelda. And Zelda is talking to Link. They're in like an underground dungeon. And instead of Link speaking, they have Navi speak for Link. 
So oh, okay. I thought that was a good way to have Link be able to communicate, but without him directly talking. So oh. Zelda would say something like, what are we going to do? We need to hurry and get to this place. And then Navi would say, like, she would be the one answering, saying, yes, we need to be careful or whatever. And I thought that was really great. That was uh, smart. But the uh, the actor that played Link is one of my other friends. He's the lead singer of a band. If anyone has ever heard of them, City of Ashes, uh, they're really great. And he said it was really weird because it was the first movie or video shoot that he'd been in where he had absolutely no lines. So like the entire time he just had to sit at the table staring straight ahead, making like exaggerated facial expressions. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, it, it was really funny uh, to hear like the process that went into it. But uh, yeah. with you, have other than your cosplay and modeling, have you ever acted in anything or ventured outside of just modeling? Yeah, uh, I went to school for musical theater, so I studied like singing, acting, dancing. Um, I did some like backup dancing for like Katy Perry and Nelly Furtado and like. Sean Desmond, who's a pretty good Canadian artist here, or was, um, hasn't been around in a while. Um, I also did some stunt work on like TV shows um, and like just some background work here and there. Awesome. I kind of slowly converted into modeling yeah. from like dancing and acting. I think I'm lazy. You mentioned background work. It's really yeah. interesting because uh, my friend Oliver, the director that I was speaking of, in the first three or four Harry Potter films, he played uh -huh. as Harry Potter's uh, stand-in. So like, if they needed to record a scene and they needed uh, Daniel Radcliffe to go somewhere and record something, but they still had to shoot like a conversation between Harry and one of the other actors, yeah. it would be like the back of Oliver's head. So like, it, it's just really funny how they just like get someone to replace the other person and just film the back of their head or something while uh, the real actor is talking to them. So it, it, it's interesting. Uh, what are some of the shows or movies that you uh, did some of that in? Um, I was like a stunt double for a show called Covert Affairs. Okay. Um, Nikita, uh, Beauty and the Beast, the TV show. There's like a cop drama TV show. I, I don't know how well it did actually. Um, Lost Girl. Yeah. All right. Those are two. Those are all filmed in Toronto. All right. Yeah. Uh, some of my favorite shows on TV are filmed up in Canada, like uh, The Flash and stuff. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's just the production, about, like, it's just cheaper here. Everything <laughs> yeah. it can be. So. Um, all right. So, when you were growing up, uh, how did you first get into gaming or whatever? Uh, like my the grandma. nerdy stuff. Your grandpa, awesome. My grand, my grandma, my grandma. Oh, your she grandma. She lived in our basement. Yeah, so she lived in our basement when I was growing up, and um, she had a Sega Genesis. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and she would uh, play like Sonic, and she's like, "Yeah, I love Sonic." <laughs> awesome. So I would go downstairs and like just watch her play video games and and also play video games and. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so I would just constantly be in my my basement playing video <laughs> games with my grandma. So, yeah. <laughs> Talking to you earlier, you mentioned uh, your introduction into like the Zelda series. You had the neighbor that mm -hmm. introduced you to Ocarina of Time. Was that yeah. your first time playing the Zelda series or...? Uh, yeah, Ocarina of Time was, was my first time playing Zelda. So I'm, yeah, I'm 28 years old um, and so... I was I was a little too young for the earlier games. Yeah. Um. So I I got into Ocarina of Time. I was like in grade four, or five or so. Yeah. yeah. I would go over to my friend's house all the time and play like Super Smash Bros. and like uh, GoldenEye, like 007 on N64 and everything, and and then Ocarina of Time. And what I would do is I would get my guy friends to like beat the bosses for me and stuff. Yeah. You, you mentioned uh, your fear of spiders. Yeah. <laughs> yep, and what's the first boss in uh, yeah. Ocarina of Time? Giant spider. I, I was not, I was not happy. So, yeah. I would help, I would get my friends to help me play, but I, I wanted, I wanted to play and I wanted to know what's going on, but I would just kind of get a little too scared at times. Skyward Sword, 
You know the second time you go through the temples, basically? Yeah. And you've got the guardians? Yeah. And, oh. <laughs> I remember that happened for the first time where they were, where your time would kind of run out or you would be seen while you're like collecting. Yeah, uh, it's, it's very intense. Yeah, oh my god, like I was not expecting it. You have to like, you're basically holding your breath while you're playing. Yeah, it was terrifying. I had a heart attack the first time and they just charge at you and kill you. And I was just like, this is not, this is not okay. <laughs> Brought back oh, creative time memories. <laughs> What's up everybody, really quick before we get to the usual end slate, I wanted to mention a quick update for this channel. I'm trying to bring together a few new series other than the usual discussions and news videos that we do. I would like to bring quality reviews, let's plays, do more live streams, a top 10 series, and more analysis videos. However, to do this, I need your help. Between being a new father, YouTube, and my real job, I don't have the time to work on all of these videos. So I'd like to bring on other people who can help out from time to time, like Sissizi and others who have helped host and edit videos before. To make this all happen, and to get awesome rewards for yourself, head over to patreon.com slash gameoverjesse where you can get shoutouts and videos, join our group discord and chat with us whenever you want, be a guest on some of our videos, and much more.